Hello, everybody. This is a special lesson today, the 45th anniversary of the most famous shipwreck on the Great Lakes. I would argue the second most famous shipwreck in American history behind the Titanic. This is a special lesson about the storms that happen at this time of the year that are called the Witches of November. I don't know how superstitious you are, but this is the only witches I'm ever scared of. Okay? So here's the date. Because of COVID changing everything, I'm not able to keep up my tradition that I've always done and sing the seven verses of this famous song, uh, The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Okay? So I'm going to call today's lesson The Witches of November. All right. Now, first thing you need to know is we live near some of the largest lakes in the world. Okay? This is Lake Superior. Duluth would be right here. Albert Lee would be over here, right about there. Okay? All right. First things first. Here is. A painting I have in my classroom it's hard to see because of the glare of the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald on the bottom of Lake Superior it snapped into two big pieces okay the back end of the ship is broken loose twisted free and upside down this ship made I mean its career was spent transporting iron from Minnesota to the steel mills in Cleveland. Okay? All right. Now, you'll need a highlighter or a colored pencil. I call the colored pencils ghetto highlighters. They work just fine. Okay? And everybody, all the A kids got this today, and the B kids have it in class from me. Look at all the notes you don't have to take today. You just have to highlight things. I'm going to use a red, orange-red pencil for a highlighter. Highlight today's date, the 10th of November. Okay? It's going to show up again and again and again, like here. November 10th, 1911. November 10th, 1913. Okay? Armistice Day Blizzard, that was one day later, 11-11. The famous shipwreck happened on 11 10, 1975. I was a little kid. And your parents were probably around in 1998. They might have even been students of mine. 11 10, 1998. Okay? <coughs> All right. So, on this date in 1911, we had the deadliest, deadliest northern tornado outbreak in the fall. Okay? It was tornadoes at the beginning, and it was a blizzard at the end. People were killed by tornadoes in Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, and we had a deadly blizzard that night, and dozens were killed. This is 1911. Yes, that's a long time ago. It's 109 years ago. Okay? Two years later, the three-day white hurricane, hurricane strength winds in a blizzard that went for, blew for three days. Dozens of ships sank on the Great Lakes. Uh, they think somewhere around 300 sailors died. We'll never know. Okay? Now, 1940. My parents were born in 1942. Okay? 11-11-1940. This is the Armistice Day blizzard. Okay? Armistice Day is the original name for the holiday. It was the, the way we marked the end of World War I. Okay? We now call it Veterans Day. Now, what was unusual about 1940 was everybody had the day off. It was a holiday, and the weather was absolutely gorgeous, like the weather we've, we've just been having. It was unusually warm, and it was duck season. And in Minnesota, guys that had the day off said, we're going duck hunting. And it was really, really warm out, so they didn't have a lot of heavy clothing on. Okay? 
The day started out with temperatures in the 50s and 60s. Hey, that sounds like now. Yeah. Okay. And the duck hunting was epic. The sky was filled with millions of ducks and geese. Hunters had never seen it so good. They couldn't believe it. Almost everybody limited out right away. What they didn't know was what the ducks did know. A storm was coming, and those ducks were flying south with a tailwind blowing, coming out of Canada. They did not want to get caught by the bad weather behind them, and the hunters on the ground didn't know that they were. many of them were going to die. Okay, What happened was, Okay, the weather was nice. Hunters went out only in light camo. Okay. This is 1940, so they didn't have the fancy clothes we have now that are water resistant. Okay. The temperature fell 60 degrees. These are guys that it, it had been nice and then it rained and so they're soaking wet. And the duck hunting was so good they stayed out and then the temperature began to fall and fall and fall and they began to freeze in their duck boats. I don't know if you've ever seen a duck boat, but they're very, very, very shallow. Sometimes only a few inches. And they don't do well in waves. Okay, So you had people in duck boats with decoys and sometimes a dog and a bunch of dead ducks. And, it, and then the waves came in and the duck boats were sinking. Okay, um, The rain turned to snow. They ended up with 20-foot snow drifts. And some cars were buried in snow drifts, not even found till spring. The reason it affects us today is you've never known what it was like back in 1940, neither do do I. We used to have country roads that are just out flat in the country without any ditches. After 1940, we realized uh, that's a mistake, and our state redid all those roads, digging ditches beside the roads and using the dirt to build the road up so that when a snowplow came along, it could push the snow off the road and the snow had somewhere to go. In 1940, they couldn't even move the snow drifts. There was nowhere to put it. So there were some roads that were closed all winter. Okay? All right. Now, for the, the main attraction for today. The, the storm that happened in 1975. This is called the Edmund Fitzgerald storm. Okay? Now, we measure storms by how low their air pressure is. And we keep records. As the storm came across the Midwest, it went right across Albert Lee, and we set the state record that day. As the storm was headed toward the Great Lakes to sink the ship, the lowest air pressure reading in Minnesota state history was set in Albert Lee. Okay? Now, I'm going to play a video clip. It's a few minutes long. This is from a Michigan news station. Uh, the Edmund Fitzgerald is big news in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan. The legend lives on from the Chippewa on down, or so the song goes, about one of Michigan's most well-known shipwrecks. People still love talking about the Edmund Fitzgerald and the unanswered questions behind its sinking, so we took a closer look. We still linger with the question of what happened. What happened so suddenly that 29 men apparently never had a chance for survival in Lake Superior on November 10th, 1975. That date in November of 1975 will forever be remembered in the state of Michigan. It was on that night that the Edmund Fitzgerald battled the rough waters of Lake Superior as the skies of November turned gloomy. That was a battle she would ultimately lose just shy of Whitefish Bay. And while the Fitz was just one of over 6,000 vessels that sit at the bottom of the Great Lakes, it always seems to garner the most attention from Michigan natives. So what makes the Fitzgerald stand out? I talked to former TV5 reporter Rick Mixer for that answer. There's a couple of points. The first is it's modern, 1975. The second is everybody disappeared. You know, even 1958 when the Bradley went down on Lake Michigan, (coughs) they found most of the crew, sadly, just two survivors. In 66, off the tip of the thumb, the uh, Morel went down. Most of the crew was found. So how was it in 75 that 29 guys completely vanished? Then, of course, that piqued the interest of a Canadian songwriter named Gordon Lightfoot, who wrote a song that went to number two on the charts in 1976. So the legend, I think, was really born then. The legend of the Fitzgerald may have been born then, but the Witch of November, as Lightfoot called it, had already been well known. Let's take a trip to the first Warren Five Weather Center for a closer. There's the Witch. The Witch of November refers to powerful.
powerful storm systems that developed. You live right here. We often see these powerful storm systems track across the Great Lakes and they're getting themselves organized east of the Rockies. It's where cold air masses from Canada meet warm and humid air masses from the Gulf of Mexico. As they develop, they ride the jet stream into the region where they feed off the warm waters of the Great Lakes, allowing them to intensify more than they otherwise would. That brings strong winds and high waves in addition to any rain or snow that might develop. And the storm that sank the Edmund Fitzgerald was no different. That storm system was getting itself organized in central Kansas right around the time the this Edmund Fitzgerald and the Arthur M. Anderson were getting ready to leave their ports. And it wasn't long after that that the National Weather Service issued their first warning of the night, a gale warning for the possibility of winds around 45 knots. Captain Ernest McSorley of the Fitzgerald and Captain Jesse Cooper of the Anderson were both very experienced. And because of that warning, they decided to take a more northerly route across Lake Superior, hoping to gain some protection from largest lake in the world. By surface area, they started to take a turn for the worse. The National Weather Service ultimately upgraded the gale warning to a storm warning for winds near 50 knots and waves of around 8 to 16 feet. They became even more concerned for the night ahead as they made their turn off to the southeast in northern Lake Superior. That storm system was moving very there's the witch to the north and east and ultimately was turning the winds more northwesterly, allowing them to build the waves even higher than they already were. And around 5 p.m. that night, the Arthur M. Anderson reported wind gusts of around 75 knots and waves that were near 12 to 18 feet. Now, these conditions not completely unheard of on the Great Lakes during the month of November. And in the case of the Fitzgerald, it could have just been a case of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. When we're talking about big waves, we're looking for three ingredients. A strong wind, which we certainly had, a very persistent wind that we saw with that storm system and also a long fetch or a long distance over water for that wind to essentially build up some momentum and start to build those waves even higher. And it was around 7 p.m. that night that the winds were starting to approach 80 to 85 miles per hour as far as the gusts go and the waves could have been greater than 25 and a half feet. Captain Cooper of the Anderson checked in on the Fitzgerald and that's when Captain McSorley said we're holding our own. That was the last communication ever received from the Fitzgerald. She now rests 530 feet below the surface, about 17 miles from Whitefish Point. While it's clear that the weather was a challenge that night when the Witch of November came stealing, Rick Mixter says no one knows for sure what actually caused her to go down. It's completely up to, you know, debate. There's some people say it was a series of three storms or the three sisters. Some still believe holding on to the false feeling that it somehow ran aground and that's where it, you know, wrecked its bottom and it couldn't recover from there. Still other people just believe it was that single wave that pushed them under and others are now kind of hinting that there was a structural failure too, that the ship had been not upkept very well and that was part of the problem too. I don't think we'll ever know now. Less. All right. Now, here's the song. I put up with an ad first. Don't you want your pocket of America to still feel like its own? This became the number one song in the country the next year after the sinking. The legend lives on from the Chippewa on down at the big lake they call Gitchagoonie. Here's a superstition. The lake it is said never gives up her dead when the skies of November turn gloomy. With a load of iron ore, 26,000 tons more than the Edmund Fitzgerald weighed empty. That good ship and true was a bone to be chewed when the gales of November came early. The ship was the pride of the American side, coming back from some mill in Wisconsin. As the big freighters go, it was bigger than most, with a crew and a captain well seasoned. Concluding soon turns with a couple of steel firms when they left fully loaded for Cleveland. Then later that night when the ship's bell rang, could it be the north wind they'd been feeling? Here's the witch. The dawn came late and the breakfast 
afternoon came it was freezing rain in the face of a hurricane west wind all right there's three more verses after that all right here we go back to the notes all right now what i want you to know is the state record was set in Albert Lee on that date, okay? Now, 29 guys died and we didn't get any of their bodies back. The legend is said, the lake it is said never gives up her dead when the gales of November come early, okay? No bodies were recovered. N no bodies, the bodies are still inside. They won't, the water's so cold and there's not much oxygen, so th they're probably still in there. It'd be really gross to see. That's a the shipwreck has been declared a grave site, so people are not allowed to go looking for their bodies. All right. Now that was in 1975. I was a little kid. I was now. I'm fast forwarding to November 10th, 1998. It was my seventh year of teaching. No, my eighth year of teaching. And we woke up that morning knowing a wet a storm was coming in. And we couldn't believe they hadn't called school off already. This is back in the good old days when we had old-fashioned snow days. Okay, it, it, We knew snow was in the forecast, and it was starting to be freezing rain. And I waited for them to call off school, and I waited for them to call off school, and finally I was like, man, they're not going to call it off. And I got in my four-wheel drive, and I got to Southwest really slowly. It was super, super slippery. And I finally, this, this is when Earth Science... It was taught in ninth grade, and ninth graders were at Southwest. And I got inside the building and ran into another teacher, and we looked at each other and like, what are we doing here? It is horrible out. We couldn't believe they hadn't called school off. Okay? The wind was incredibly strong. Um, we, had, we did a regular school day. There were quite a few kids gone. Everybody with a brain was stayed home. Okay? And this is way before cell phones, so we didn't even know we were on the Weather Channel all day long until I got home that night and found out we'd been on the Weather Channel all day long because one of our school buses had been f blown over into a ditch and some of the school kids had been hurt. Okay, Some of those kids were my kids, but we didn't know until the news. Okay, Here's the freaky thing. So Albert Lee had the records in 1975 were the strongest storm. Okay? It got broken that day by Albert Lee. Do you know how weird a coincidence that is? That the same place broke the record on the same day of the year? There's 365 days in a year that the record could be broken. And there's over 400 cities and towns in Minnesota that could have broken our record. But we broke our own record on the same day, November 10th. Albert Lee, November 10th. Okay. Now let me tell you a little bit more about it. Uh, some of you will know where this happened and some of you won't, okay? Um, what happened was the regular bus driver had called in sick, so a substitute bus driver who had never driven this route was driving the bus. He had just begun picking up kids out by um, good, past Good Sam on the, oh, on the Bath Road. It's, Bath is a little place that used to be a town. There's some S turns out there. The driver took the turn too fast on slippery roads with high wind, and he went off the road into the ditch. He, it didn't roll, but the few kids that were in there were all thrown, like, all the way across the bus. Okay? One of my... Dustin Dimmer was hit by Corey Hovey. Uh, Dustin only had slight injuries. Corey Hovey was in the hospital for months. Uh, Dustin's sister, Katie, had to wear a neck brace for a while. And my student, Trisha Quinvold, had her pelvis broken. Okay? Your pelvis is what holds your legs to your torso. Okay? Now, that record stayed. We, kept, we held that record for the strongest storm in Minnesota until 2010. 35 years we held that record. 35-year record. I was very, very sad when our record was finally broken in 2010 by the town of Big Fork, Minnesota on October 26th. Because I'm a weather geek, I'll admit it. All right. 
Now, here's your other, the Witches of November. These are powerful storms that happen mid-November after nice, warm fall weather suddenly changes to winter. The faster it changes, the deadlier it is. Suddenly changes to winter. The sailor, sailors are known for being superstitious. They really do think of them like they're an evil spirit or something. Okay? If you were out on the Great Lakes and you had waves like that, you would think something was tr definitely intentionally trying to kill you. Okay? Here's the last thing. Hopefully you and I can talk about this in person. Okay? There were two or three waves out there during that storm on Lake Superior that the guys on the ship said might have been 35 feet high. That's as high as the gym ceiling in Albert Lee High School, okay? 35-foot rogue waves. Okay? That's incredible. Uh, and I want to give you a little bit of idea how big a ship this is. It's the same length as our building. If you walk from the pool door all the way across the building all the way past my room to the end of my hallway, that's the length of the Titanic, about 800 feet long. I said Titanic, I mean Edmund Fitzgerald. Edmund, everybody just calls it the Big Fitz. The Edmund Fitz was about the length of ALHS. I want you to pay attention to this day in the year if you live in Minnesota, because this is when the storms are the most, often most deadly, okay? It's not the ones in the middle of the winter. It's the ones when we think, oh, this is a nice fall, and then it gets you, okay? All right, 23 minutes is enough. I hope you watched this, and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you want to see something cool, I don't know if, you, if you're still interested in this, this is a site I found really, really interesting. This lady is twisted, okay? Look up this link, the lake that never gives up her dead, okay? She, uh, she's a mortician, somebody who takes care of bodies, okay? She's something else. It, it's, she's funny. Um, I would recommend you watch that, but you don't have to.